This moment will tell me who watched even 15 seconds of the video and who reacted in the comments based solely on the title and thumbnail. The clear answer to the question is no. I just happen to have a series called Did Insert Ride or Park Name Here Disappoint. I will not be complaining in this video. Okay, let's get into it. Wildcat's Revenge, formerly known as RMC Wildcat, was revealed this week and while I have posted my initial reaction to it, I'd like to take some time to get some more formulated thoughts out there regarding this coaster. I'd like to note that these opinions are formed by a combination of the official ride stats and renders from Hershey Park, as well as the No Limits 2 POV made by Amusement Insider. I know that there may be some inaccuracies in this POV, but from what I can tell it seems to be extremely close and Amusement Insider did an amazing job on this. Starting with the 140 foot lift hill, I know some people were upset that this is not a launch hill like predicted. If you're curious why people thought this was going to be a launch, Premiere tweeted this out for which various obvious reasons led people to believe a launch would be on Wildcat's Revenge. We essentially have it confirmed now that this will not be happening based on the words lift hill in the reveal trailer, as well as the overall time and track length of the ride. To be honest, I'm really happy about this decision. If they had a launch lift hill, it would take a big chunk out of ride time. Based on New Texas Giants lift hill which is only about 10 feet taller than Wildcat's Revenge, we can expect this new chain to take about 30 minutes of this ride overall. Those 30 seconds will be absolutely invaluable for the 3 train ride operations that will be happening at this ride. Speaking of 3 train ops, I've heard it said that this ride will be having a separate load and unload station. If you don't know what that is, the most iconic example I can think of is Millennium Force at Cedar Point. I have mixed feelings about separate unload platforms, but it really isn't my place to discuss block zone implications that they can create. If you want more information about that, check out El Toro Ryan's problematic coaster videos for Dragster and Millennium Force. Basically to sum up how it will affect Wildcat though, if Hershey can keep all three trains up and running without having to go down to two or even one train very often, this is a huge win for the park, and I have seen capacity estimates of upwards of 1400 riders per hour. That's 200 more riders per hour than Steel Vengeance, a ride that is usually known to have insanely fast dispatches with a top notch crew. 200 riders per hour is equivalent to 8 fully filled trains, but in reality will probably be closer to 9 or 10 trains per hour due to single riders and other outlying circumstances. That's quite the significant advantage, and it should make the line absolutely fly for this ride. Much like Steel Vengeance, Wildcat's Revenge has 3 custom trains. Well, Steel Vengeance has 3 custom trains in the loosest definition of custom trains, but I'm going to count it for this comparison. P.S. My favorite Steel Vengeance train is Chess. Anyway, I've heard that each train will feature a different cat on the front, and that's pretty cool if you ask me. Besides that, I do not have much of an opinion on the trains yet. The promo material is so dang dark, and I don't feel like I can accurately judge any aesthetics of this ride. Sadly, that also includes the red track with black support beams on the wooden frame. On paper, that sounds cool to me. In practice, we're just going to have to see. Okay, I have a confession. I'm kind of getting cold on the RMC Zero G rolls. Before you roast me alive, let me explain. I enjoy going through these elements, however, they have almost become as synonymous for me with RMC as corkscrews were with Arrow. Any new RMCs announced almost certainly feature one if not more Zero G rolls. I just want them to add a totally new inversion for this coaster. I suppose the underflip is unique, but I'm really not excited about that. Consider for a moment the two RMZ iBox coasters opening in America in 2023. Both have four inversions, their hills are between 140 and 150 feet, and they both have a max speed of 64 miles per hour. On paper, these are very, very similar coasters by stats. While I would argue that Hershey has the more complete ride, I think Funspot Atlanta is ending up having the more interesting set of inversions. I mean, they have the largest zero-g stall in America. Sure, there's going to be two zero-g rolls on that ride, but they also introduced a brand new inversion, the Raven Trust Dive. That dive looks absolutely insane and I cannot wait to try it next year. The last thing I want to talk about, I already answered at the start of this video, but I want to answer it more in depth. Did Hershey Park disappoint us with Wildcat's Revenge? Clearly not. But my only complaint about it is the originality of the inversions, I think it's probably safe to say that they smashed a home run with this one. Not only because of the layout, but also the timing. 2023 is largely a year with family coaster after family coaster, so I have no doubt that enthusiasts across the country and possibly even world will make trips out to ride this coaster. The only other thrill coaster that I can think of off the top of my head in America in 2023 is obviously Airy Force 1 down at Fun Spot. I know that there are other thrill coasters opening like the Chance Hyper GTX coming to the new Mattel theme park in Arizona, but nothing else could possibly really stand up to the profile of two new iBox RMCs. Let me know what you think about Wildcat's Revenge. As always, I look forward to talking with you guys in the comments and on Twitter, which is linked in the description below. Remember to subscribe as I'm on the road to 4,000 subscribers with the goal of hitting it before November 18th. I'm Josh from Station Wait. Have a great day.